you geeks. I'm breaking up my normal philosophic dissection of the Stormlight Archive to perform my other speciality, apologetics for non-canon ships. Today, we're tackling Kaleshwe. I don't subscribe to this ship, but I ship Zutara, so I think I can understand why people would ship Kaleshwe. And I must admit, it has its moments. So here is the best I can fathom for Kaleshwe's premise, ship, and defense. Let me know down in the comments if I missed anything. There will be spoilers through Rhythm of War. The premise. We meet Kaladin as a slave in the way of kings who may have had a girlfriend once. Tara is mentioned in passing, but it seems he was destined as the series' young male lead to end up with Shallan, the series' young female lead. He was a punk, she did ballet, what more can I say? And then we got that odious love triangle in Words of Radiance and Oathbringer between Kaladin, Shallan, and Adolin, ending with Shallan choosing Adolin and marrying him. Thus, everyone's favorite flying bridge boy enters into Rhythm of War flying solo. I'm riding solo, solo. On the other side of this pairing, we have Lushwi. She enters in Oathbringer, trying to kill Moash. A noble goal, but short-lived as he kills her. Then she returns to Moash because she finds him intriguing. Why would I destroy that which has such passion? Instead, I watched you, curious to see what you did. I saw you help the singers who were pulling the sledges. I know I might have jumped on the Moash hate train a bit early, but by the end of Oathbringer, that train had gained considerable momentum because he killed Elikar, a path on which Leshwi aided him. Moash walked the streets of the conquered town by himself. Lady Leshwi had ordered that Moash be left alone, freed. But in her defense, it was war and she rewarded him for showing honor a subtle distinction that did not seem very important as Leshwi was just one name out of dozens of newly introduced fused. Just one soul bound to Odium who needs an innocent singer to be sacrificed so she can take their body and interact with the physical world. So I was unsurprised that she not only freed F-Face but promoted him. The blade of Jezereza, honor blade. Moash reached for it, hesitant, and Leshwi hummed a warning rhythm. If you take it, you die. Moash will be no more. And she never shared page time with Caliban. Thus, if any shipping of these two occurred after Oathbringer, it was extremely remote. Until the rhythm of war early release chapters. Kaladin searches her out on the battlefield. Would Leshwi be among them? He hoped she would. As they needed a rematch, he wasn't certain he'd be able to recognize her, as she died last time. He couldn't claim credit. And then, after chapter 6, Lindsay Luther, who wrote color commentary for the preview chapters on Tor's website, wrote... I just have to note that I have a tiny bit of a ship for Cal and Leshwi, probably just because I'm partial to that enemies turn lovers trope. I don't actually expect it to go anywhere, nor am I super invested in it. I wouldn't be upset if it happened. Up in my visor, it's as big as a whale and it's about to set sail. And the shipping has begun. The ship. I hate to say it, but the evidence of Kaleshwi might even be stronger than the evidence for Zutara. For Kaladin doesn't know she promoted Moash, so while he sees her as an enemy, he does not see her as evil, especially since she fights so honorably. 
In the opening battle, she spares Sigzel and allows Kaladin to end their duel early to go save civilians. He heard an angry-sounding hum behind him. Leshery had drifted near, closer than he should have let her get, but she didn't strike. She watched the fused and his soldiers below, and the sound of her angry humming intensified. We also discover that Leshery finds Kaladin fascinating, and maybe she doesn't want to kill him, or at least she doesn't want the pursuer to kill him. It is rare to find a human who can fight in disguise well enough to be a challenge for me, Leshwi said. This is a very strong starting place for an enemies to lovers arc. It's not like Kaladin personally hates Leshwi either. At the end of Oathbringer, he is sympathetic to the singer's claim as the rightful owners of Roshar. But in the fight in the market, he indicates he has still chosen to fight for honor and against Leshwi. I know the kind of men who follow Odium, Leshwi. I could almost trust you for the honor you've shown me, if it didn't mean trusting him as well. Despite their ideological differences, Kaladin still has a soft spot for Leshwi, taking time to point out to her that he technically never broke his word before revealing that he tricked her. Leshwi seems to take that in stride, as her ideology slowly shifts over the course of Rhythm of War. She saved Kaladin's family from the pursuer and offered a less brutal tyranny than he. Not that it took much, but she had no reason besides her honor to be a beneficent tyrant. Her honor grows to the point that she eventually betrays Odium to save civilians from being slaughtered. She flew directly into the fight and began pulling away the soldiers, shouting for them to halt. When they didn't, Leshwi started swinging. Though, it still takes her a hot moment to realize that she has, in fact, betrayed Odium and joined the side of the humans, Kaladin's side, which he welcomes her with open arms, even sharing his armor. That could be quite romantic in the right circumstances. Yet, after all this, the ship is not canon, since Leshwi decides that while she is no longer of Odium, she cannot stay in Kaladin's fight. We fought against our own to preserve lives, Leshwi said. We do not wish that to continue. We will find a third option, outside this war, the path of the listeners. That's where their relationship ends in Rhythm of War. Not in love, but I'll admit, there is strong potential. The defense. There are three big objections to Kaleshwi, above and beyond the basic, they're just not that into each other. First is that they were enemies. She's killed his friend, which Kaladin had taken very, very personally. And he's killed her. However, in fantasy, when has this ever been a reason not to ship a couple. Four of you have tried to kill me in the past. One of you succeeded. Many people, myself included, find a couple locked in epic battle against each other and their raging hormones to be wonderful shipping father. So this is almost a plus that some people will just never understand. Besides, how could he ever find out about this? Second is the age difference. Kaladin is in his early 20s, and Leshwi is thousands of years old. I'm not going to say that age is just a number, but when you have two full adults without any close familial or blood relationship between them, it's hard to say that there's anything wrong with the age gap, especially when the elder is functionally immortal. Aragorn and Arwen are the second most iconic pairing from The Lord of the Rings. It is mine to give to whom I will. Like my heart. Arwen is not only ages older than Aragorn, but they are both descendants of Arendil and Elwing, though that does not make them closely related in the creepy sort of way. 
but it's a bit odd that he grew up in her father's house. However, Arwen was in Lothlorien while Aragorn grew up, so that awkwardness was avoided. Comparing those two to Calvin and Leshwi, their age difference seems quite trivial. Finally, there's that troubling part about Leshwi that she's not just Calvin's enemy, but literally sold her soul to Odium, like Meg from Hercules. Aren't we forgetting one teensy weensy but ever so crucial little tiny detail? I own you! Now, that wasn't a turnoff for Hercules, though Meg never did become a Disney princess. Notably, when Hades claimed her soul and Hercules took it back, she still had her own body to return to. Leshwi's physical existence is contingent upon murdering an innocent singer. The ethics of that are disturbing enough, not to mention the question of biology. It's unclear how much romance singers feel when not in mate form. Can Leshwi even take mate form? And I'm not going to open that can of worms. Rather, let's just say that Leshwi would use the body of a person she's murdered to have physical relations with Caliban. That's a bit odd, right? Wanda, no. Stop. You are not going there. What about Jared? This is very complicated. Though, I'll admit it. I wouldn't have thought it that weird in high school. Even though Leshwi won't kill again and take another body, I'm relieved she decided to move away from Yurithiru and Kaladin. Of course, there's always the off chance that in the back five, the Radiants are going to raise to annihilate Odium. They might need Leshwi to guide them there, and Kaladin could go because he might be the only mentally stable Radiant available. Also, with his armor, he probably wouldn't need a spacesuit. I won't be writing any Kaleshwi fanfics, ever. But if someone wanted to write that, I'd read it. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you would like to see more. Your patronage is greatly appreciated.